Hey guys, this is Srini and thank you for watching these tutorials on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about shading correction and I'm sure most of you can relate to this. And uh, you may also think of this as non-uniform illumination reduction. For example, if you are shining light from one side and you are imaging something and one of the, you know, one side of your image is brighter than the other, how do you correct for this? Because this can affect your segmentation. So for this, I'm going to show you two ways. Uh, the first way is using contrast limiting adaptive histogram equalization, CLAHE in short. And I talked about this in the past, but let's just apply that and see uh, if it's doing a good job. If not, what is the uh, other plan? As you can tell from the screen, uh, the, our actual plan is to use uh, rolling ball background subtraction because it does an amazing job. But first, let's jump into our spider IDE. Okay, so uh, the image I'm gonna uh, work with is uh, this image that you can see here, which is again a electron microscope image of uh, some alloy over there. And you see on one side, it's very dark. On the other side, it's pretty bright. I artificially uh, added this uh, shading uh, and uh, the shading can also come from one corner to the other. Again, it completely depends on your, uh, on your specific image. So uh, first of all, let me uh, copy a few lines of code for CLAHE. And again, I already covered this in one of my previous tutorials. I'm not going to dwell too much time on this topic, but I'm doing this so we can compare the result from here with the other, with rolling ball. So I'm going to use OpenCV to read my image, and I'm reading it as a color image, which is, uh, uh, there is a reason for that, because for CLAHE, uh, for, I would like, I mean, you can also read it as a grayscale image if you want, but uh, I'm sticking with the, my previous tutorial, so I'm going to convert my RGB color into LAB space and only using the luminance channel because A and B contain the color information, L contains the gray level or luminance information. Okay, so now I'm going to apply my CLAHE to this uh, to this L channel, and how do we do that? First, we need to create a CLAHE CLAHE instance which is what I've done here and then I'm going to apply that onto my L channel okay and this is all available as part of OpenCV so you can actually look at this and uh, again I explained what the clip, clip limit and tile grid sizes are in my previous tutorial and finally once that luminance has been adjusted I'm merging the other channels color channels to recreate my original colored image so let's go ahead and visualize my corrected image uh, and for that, let's use the OpenCV's uh, CV2.im show. So I'm going to show the original image and corrected image, okay? And finally, I added this line because here it's a, it's a merged image, but it's still a LAB space image. So I'm converting that from LAB to BGR, which is our color image, okay? So let's run, run all of these lines to see our before and after pictures, okay? It's not bad, actually. I mean, you can see this was our original image and this is our modified image. But if you see, in fact, if you squint pretty hard, you can actually see that this part of the image is still pretty dark compared to the right hand side. In fact, if you try to threshold or segment this image, it would be almost impossible. OK, uh, using the histogram threshold or also waste thresholding. It is not a great uh, solution. So let's actually uh, do the second part which is uh, uh, using rolling ball background. What do we mean by rolling ball background? Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, the background value is determined at every pixel by averaging over a very large uh, ball background around the pixel. So let's say my pixel central pixel is somewhere here and then I can define, okay, my rolling ball has a radius of 30. It actually averages all the pixels and then it actually gets the background and subtracts the background uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 and, and creates this, uh, it removes, uh, in other words, large spatial variations, okay, in background intensities when you perform this operation. Uh, and uh, the radius, of course, should be set according to your input image, right? It cannot be like too small. Uh, my recommendation is to set it to at least the size of the largest object that you have in your image, okay, largest feature. So now before any uh, further ado, let's uh, go ahead and uh, call the required libraries. Now, uh, in the past, I have actually coded the entire rolling ball uh, a long time ago, but someone, uh, Good Samaritan, actually uh, uh, 
made this available as part of python this is available in image j by the way to get this just pip install opencv dash rolling dash ball okay so this should install rolling ball and i can also give uh, the link to the pypy package uh, as part of the description but this is exactly what we are going to install and once you do that now you should be able to call subtract background rolling ball from this library that's all you need to do okay so we're all set now let's actually go ahead and uh, define our image in fact i shouldn't have erased my previous lines but that's okay i can copy and paste it so again we are reading our image i'm reading it as a grayscale image here again you could have done the tricks that i've done earlier and i'm defining my radius as uh, 30 first of all let's actually run up to this here so you can see my uh, image here is 484 by 694 in dimensions okay 484 by 694 so for that i'm defining a radius of 30. let's see how well of a job it actually does and uh, now the rolling ball actually gives you two outputs one is your corrected image and the other one is actual background so you can see how the subtracted image looks like okay so let's go ahead and uh, let's actually go ahead and run this first and this may take a little while because the computation is pretty heavy so let's go ahead and run these lines and i'll probably pause my video and continue it in a second uh, first of all it says radius is not defined because i haven't run that line now let's go ahead and run it one more time okay there you go it's done so now let's actually go ahead and plot it and have a look at it so the way we do this is uh, as you probably know again cv2.im show and do not forget the cv2.wait key and destroy all windows otherwise it gets stuck over there uh, so let's uh, go ahead and run these lines to visualize our outputs and it's on my other screen so let me go ahead and bring it here so this is my background and this is after background subtraction. I'm not sure if you can see anything. There is some features in there and uh, here is my background, okay? Uh, and you see how the background here is dark and as you go progressively, it gets brighter. That means it's actually doing a good job now. Okay, that's my background image. Now, what do we do with this after background subtraction? That doesn't look that great actually. So uh, I normally recommend after using this, performing a uh, performing our uh, uh, contrast limiting histogram equalization so the exercise that we have done before makes sense to do it right here to make sure we have a decent image so i'm running this again in, again i'm not separating the l a b channels and everything just because this is a gray level image i'm applying it right on this image so let's go ahead and run these two lines okay again all i'm trying to do is just perform this cla he histogram equalization on the previous image to see it improves our uh, result any better and i hope it should let's go ahead and uh, add that for our visualization and let's run this one more time there you go and now we should see three images the third image is on my other screen so there you go uh, in fact, that image looks great on my uh, other screen, but on my, uh, I'm, I hope it shows up okay during my recording. But anyway, so we started off with an original image that looked pretty uh, non-uniformly illuminated, and now we ended up with an image that is uh, a bit easier to, uh, uh, a bit easier to segment. So I hope, uh, again, you found this tutorial to be useful. There are a lot of tricks like these. There are a lot of libraries out there uh, like these rolling balls and other uh, libraries. It's just that if you have a specific need, go ahead and perform a Google search and you may actually find something. Uh, don't, don't waste your time writing a whole bunch of code. If you can easily copy it from outside, go ahead and do that because it saves you a lot of your research time or any other time that you, know, you could be spending much more uh, uh, in a useful way. So thank you very much and let's again meet in the next tutorial with a different topic.